Antimicrobials are among the most important drugs to modern medicine, and using them appropriately requires a detailed knowledge of the mechanism of action and spectrum of activity of each drug class. Any discussion of antibiotics necessarily starts with the pre-antibiotic era. These are tools that we've really only had since the 1940s, and before they were developed, we were largely powerless to stop invasive infections. This is a picture of some mercury that was used in the pre-antibiotic era for treating syphilis and gonorrhea, so the importance of antimicrobials really can't be overestimated. Of course, this all changed when Alexander Fleming made his famous discovery. Um, this is an image from his original paper. You can see this penicillium colony, this mold, and staphylococci surrounding this mold. Now, what he was astute enough to observe is that the staph, which were growing in close proximity to that colony, were undergoing lysis. And he realized that this penicillium mold must be producing something which had a negative effect on the bacteria, which of course went on to become penicillin. And for this discovery, along with Ernst Chain and Howard Florey, Alexander Fleming was awarded the Nobel Prize. So how do antibiotics work? And do they all have the same mechanism of action as penicillin? Well, in general, they attack physiological processes or structures which are unique to bacteria. They need to target things which eukaryotes don't have, but which prokaryotes do, so that only the bacteria is affected during treatment, and we don't essentially poison the host. So if we look at this figure on the right, you can see each of our drug classes, our sulfonamides, uh, prevent the incorporation of PABA into the folate synthesis pathway, thereby preventing DNA synthesis. Our beta-lactams and glycopeptides all act on the peptidoglycan cell wall. Polymyxin B and polymyxin E interfere with the gram-negative cell membrane. Our fluoroquinolones act on DNA gyrase and topoisomerase, preventing DNA from being organized neatly within the cell. Rifampin inhibits DNA-dependent RNA polymerase, preventing transcription. And finally, we have a large number of drug classes which interfere with bacterial protein synthesis. The tetracyclines, aminoglycosides, macrolides, chloramphenicol, and streptogramins all act on either the 30S or 50S ribosomal subunit. Bacteria have a similarly broad spectrum of defense mechanisms against the drugs we use to try to kill them. Some organisms have decreased permeability, so they prevent drug from entering the cell, they shut down their cell wall. They can have active efflux, pumping out the drug before it's able to have its effect on its target. They can produce enzymes which either degrade or alter the drug such that it's no longer active. They can modify uh, targets within the cell such that the drugs aren't able to recognize them and aren't able to bind. They can utilize alternate metabolic pathways such that they accomplish the same physiological objective uh, through a process that's independent of the antimicrobial. Or we can have simple resistance by absence where the drug target doesn't exist. All of these strategies can be deployed either intrinsically, they can be normal for an organism, or they can be produced after the bacteria has gained some sort of genetic competence. It's had a mutation or picked up a resistance gene. Throughout this series, we're going to go through each antimicrobial class and describe the mechanism of action and spectrum of activity so that you have a better understanding of which types of organisms can be inhibited or killed with each drug class. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below.